In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to manually create a combo box on a form. We'll start by creating the combo box with a wizard. We'll examine the property sheet and that will give us insights into what we'll need to create the same combo box manually. Now I'm currently sitting in a database that's completely empty except for two tables. We have a products table and a suppliers table. So if I click on suppliers to open it up, I can see that I have currently 29 suppliers and each one of these suppliers can supply one or more products and if I open up my products table I can see all of my products that currently exist and I can see the supplier that currently supplies that product for instance exotic liquids supplies these three products on the left I will create my combo box on a form so I'm going to come out to my create tab and choose form design and this opens up a brand new blank form. I'm going to save this form. It's going to ask me to give the form a name and I will just call this form form sample and I'll click OK and now we see the name up here at the top and I see my new form over here on the left. Now if I'd like to move to form view a simple way would be to come up and click on this button here but you could also come out here to the title bar of the form right click and here are your different views down here I'm just going to click on form view and I see that I have my blank form I'll come back and right click on the title bar and choose design view to move back to design view now currently under the design tab I can see my different controls I can place on my form if I click my more button I can see even more buttons that I can use different controls to place on my form down here in the bottom I see that I'm using the control wizards and that is currently turned on so whenever I place or choose a control from here if it's available it will go ahead and fire up a wizard to help me go ahead and create um, the object or the control that I'm interested in I'm gonna come out and click on this combo box here and I'm just gonna place this on my form someplace click once it starts the form wizard and this is where I could move through the steps to create my combo box now at this point if I were to come out here and click on cancel it just creates a brand new blank unbound drop-down combo box and I could go ahead and just create and manually set up my property sheet for this guy but I'm gonna go ahead and use the wizards so I'm gonna come back and click on this one more time come down here click on my form and it starts the wizard I'd like to stuff this combo box with information from my suppliers table so I'm going to choose this first choice here and click on next now of my two tables products and suppliers I will choose suppliers and then click on next and it shows me all the fields for my suppliers I'm going to go ahead and double click on supplier ID and also the company name for the supplier I'll click on next and now it's asking me what sort order I'd like for my combo box so that when I open it up I won't just have a random set of names of my suppliers I can actually order them so that it'll be easy to scroll through the list and find the one I'm looking for I'm gonna sort on company name and then I'll click on next and it's asking me next um, showing me a little display of what my combo box will look like and here's a list of all my names in alphabetical order and I'm currently gonna hide the key column we'll talk about that in just a second um, the key column would be that supplier ID that uh, the field that I chose just a moment ago and we're gonna hide that I'm gonna go ahead and click on next it's asking for a name I'll just take the name that it gives me and I'll go ahead and click on finish and it creates my combo box now if I go back out to my form view I'll right click the title bar choose form view and if I click the drop down arrow I can just see a list in alphabetical order of all of my suppliers from the suppliers table and I can make any choice I'd like here let's move back to design view let's take a look at the property sheet for my new combo box control an easy way to get to the property sheet for any of these controls is to place your pointer on the border of the control and double click and it'll open up a property sheet for that control in this case I'm just looking at the property sheet for the combo box and I can see that right here it says combo box and if I click on all I'm gonna be able to see all the properties for this guy and if I scroll all the way to the top I can see that the name for this combo box is currently just called combo 2 I'm gonna give this a little bit more of a descriptive name I'm gonna call this CBO supplier and now I've named this control now all the wizard did is after it created the control it just came through and based on 
the answers to my questions that I walked through when I used the form wizard, it went ahead and stuffed this property sheet. So let's check out and see what properties were set here. First of all, the column count is two, and that's because I chose two fields out here. And if I take a look out here on column widths, the first column width is zero, and the second column width is 1.92 something, um, separated by a semicolon. If I come out to other, I can see the name. If I go to event, I can see there is no events currently for this control. If I go to the data sheet, I can see that the role source currently has some sort of an SQL statement inside. And I can see that the control source is completely empty. Now the row source is what's currently feeding the form. So when I click the drop down arrow on the control and I get my list, all of that's coming from the row source. When I make a choice on this guy, that is what would be fed into the control source. But we're not using a control source right now. We're just going to let this thing sit on its own. And when I make a choice from the list, that object's going to sit inside of this unbound combo box. So let's check out the row source. The row source out here, if I click on it once, you can see it says select here, which tells me it's an SQL statement or basically a query. And if I click on the three dotted button on the right, it will actually open up the query that was built. Now this query doesn't live in access at all. You will not see it over here in my objects area. It's just built on the fly and it's just representing some SQL statement, but it looks just like a query that you would normally use if you were building a query on your own. And here are the three fields. It included the supplier ID, which I asked for, which is column one. It's in the first column here. The company name is in column two, and it's also from suppliers. And it added the company name a second time because I wanted to sort in ascending order on the company name, but I'm not showing that field. I'm leaving that off because all I want to do is sort, but not display it. So I'm only really displaying column one and column two out here, and that's all that's happening. If I come back out here and I close this little query builder, it'll ask me to save changes, which I don't need to, and it dumps me back out here. Now, last is this item right here, the bound column. The bound column is column one, which if we remember back here, is currently the supplier ID. So what that means is that whenever I make a choice, when I click the drop down arrow and make a choice here on a sub company name, it's going to in turn take the ID for that company name and store it in the box in the background. So that if any other control out here comes back and says, hey, show me what's inside of this combo box, it's going to take the bound column, the first column value, which is going to be the ID, not the actual company name itself. Now, if I were to change this to say two, then the bound column is two, and any time any control on my form came out and said, hey, show me what's in this combo box, it will return currently the actual text name of the company name. But we don't want that. We want the ID. That's what's important. So we're going to take that first bound column out there. Now let's see if we can reproduce this without using the wizard. I will come back out here and I will click on my combo box tool again. And I'll come back out and click on my form, and I'll just click on cancel for the combo box wizard and I'll just do this manually. These labels out here actually don't mean anything. We'll just take those out. So this one's been stuffed and this property sheet for this guy has not been stuffed. So we're just going to come out here and make those changes. So I'll start by using the row source. I'm going to come out and click on the row sources before. I'll click on my three dotted button and I'm going to choose to stuff this with the suppliers table. Under the suppliers table, I'm going to go ahead and pull in the supplier ID and the company name and I'll pull in the company name again. I will go ahead and choose to unshow this and I'll sort this in ascending order and now this guy is completely done. I'll go ahead and turn this off. I'll save the changes and now I have my select statement out here. The bound column is going to be one. There's not going to be a control source. If I go back out here and click on format, I could come out here and say that the column count is going to be two and the column widths are going to be zero because we don't want to show the first column which is the ID and a semicolon and then I'll say something like 1.7 inches for the second half of that. All right. Um, if you remember back in the wizard when it asked me to hide the key column, that's all it's doing is setting this up as zero so it's just not showing it out here on the results. And lastly I'll come out here and give this thing a name. So it's called combo 4. I'm going to go ahead and call this CPO supplier 1. We'll just give it a separate name from the other. And that's basically it. We've got the same combo box 
just not using the wizard. And if I come back out to form view, I can see that if I click the drop down arrow, I can make some sort of a choice. If I click the drop down out here, I can make the same choice. So I get the same thing with the wizard or uh, without uh, just using it manually here or creating it manually.